George English. I'm the director of research through people. Obviously a key part of genealogy and finding out about your ancestors is, is finding records about them. And when you manage to find the record, very often if it's an old record, the handwriting may be difficult to read or it may not. And then when you actually read the, the what's in it, have you interpreted correctly? Have you just got one piece of information? Can you find other evidence to back it up? So we made this video very much for that key topic of correctly interpreting records once you've found them. And um, what we want to do is move from that record to make sure we make the correct conclusions which are supported by the evidence. And that way <laughs> we find out the right things about our ancestors and we don't go down false trails. So let's have a look at this. And what I'm going to, one reason for doing this is that I've just had an article published in America in the Mayflower Descendant, which is one of the most highly respected scholarly journals where you not only publish an article, you need to have all the evidence as genealogical support to uh, make sure the conclusions are correct. So I've written an article called Jan Carver Carwet of Leiden, not the Mayflower passenger John Carver. Now John Carver was in Leiden with the separatists and was one of those who went in 1620 on the Mayflower across to New England and became the first governor of Plymouth Colony, but sadly died within two or three months of taking over in the spring of 1621. Now I'm going to use this example, which is over 400 years old and involves different languages, because it illustrates exactly the sort of points of information we may find more recently, obviously in English normally, for our things, and the things to do and not do in correctly interpreting records. So what happened some years ago, someone found a record in Leiden and here is the record. Now Leiden is the place in Holland where the separatists from England went to for about a dozen years up to 1620 before they decided to go on the Mayflower across to New England. <clears throat> so the record is found in Leiden, it's dated the 8th of February 1609, by letter of transfer. Now this is when one person went from one church to another, they got a letter of literary introduction from that church um, to give to the new church. <clears throat> so the actual uh, line that this person interpreted was Jan Kawa and Marie de Lanois of Les Clues. Now I've put asterisks against the three bits of information which were either wrongly uh, interpreted or uh, led to confusion. Now absolutely nothing wrong with finding a name that looks like Carver looks like John Carver, maybe it's the same person, but we've got to be very careful in the conclusions we draw and finding other evidence to support that. So actually what was wrong here was he actually slightly misread Jan Carver, but he actually sort of reported this in brackets, i.e. John Carver. He assumed it was John Carver, the governor. Now Les Clues, he found a place down there, Lille, in Flanders, in what was French-speaking Flanders um, and uh, assumed it was that thing and partly because of that another key early pilgrim was Philippe de Lanois who was on the fortune in 1621 of the ship after the Mayflower his name was quickly changed to Philip Delano lots of well-known descendants including for instance President Franklin Delano Roosevelt so because the wife's name was also Delanois, and it was near Lille where the Delanois, Philippe Delanois came from, he said, well, maybe they're related. Maybe Philippe Delanois was even the nephew of John Carver. Nothing wrong with that theory, but don't um, put it forward unless you've got evidence to, to support it. Now, what was key here was actually, here is a map of the Netherlands at the time, and you'll recognize this place like Amsterdam, uh, Brussels, so the yellow bit United Netherlands now is what we now call Holland, the Spanish Netherlands down here most of that is what we now know as Belgium but in those days it was just 17 provinces. So the record is found in Leiden, he thinks they have come from a place called Les Clues, which is down here, it was then actually in Flanders not in France. Um, but one of the things I pointed out was actually the Les Clues means sluice in French but there are also places called Sluice 
in Dutch and in fact a very key place uh, up here near Bruges. Now one of the crucial things we can't find records if we're looking in the wrong place. You can look in list screws all the time you like but it's the wrong place there are no records there. So finding that, that actually it could be Sluis, a Dutch speaking place not a French speaking place was key in leading to the evidence that helped us here. So there's what we started with. We found the actual record in Leiden and here's a very interesting thing. I mean just look at that. Most of you couldn't even start to correctly interpret everything in this. And so there's a line, basically it says, there we are, Jan Carwit and Marie de Lanois de Lesclues. <laughs> or let me put it in the French at least. So that's what it says. Now, crucial thing, um, he read it as Carwer ending in R. In fact, it ends in T. Now you look at this writing, gosh, you think a T would be up and have a clue. But what's the only key thing reading old writing is, is there something else written that can help you here? Now what we've actually got here is a gift in French and is et. So literally just repeated after the end of Carwet is et. So we can see here is the way this person has written et. Here is the way the person has written t. It's exactly the same as the last two letters of Carwet. And another help, what does R look like written by this person? So the middle name of Marie, there's the R. And you can see it's very different. So. That was wrongly read, but the rest is fine. It does say Les Clues. It doesn't say Sluice. But in fact, as I say, it was actually the French version of Sluice. We know that different places, London in London, in English is London, in French is Londres. So different places spell the same place in different ways. So what the actual English translation of the record was, was here. Now, Sluice, as I say, it was actually quite a crucial place at that time a port near Bruges uh, on the coast in uh, and here's a very interesting map it, those days you had walled villages castles and so on in fact they had bastions in Sluice and you can see this rather distinctive um, protective wall outside and there's a, a map from the late 18th from the late 1700s of Sluice so we were able then to start looking for records in Sluice and we found two crucial records we found in the 4th of January 1609, just five weeks before the Leiden record, there is Jan Carwit and Marie de Lanois, his wife, joining the church by confession of faith, in other words, uh, professing, yes, I believe in this religion. Then clearly they moved to Leiden with a letter of induction from the church in Sluis. And then also found three years later another record in Sluis. Uh, by letter of transfer, Jan Carwit, soldier under Captain Van der Mersen. So this is Jan coming back to Sluice. So we've got three records now. We know he's a soldier. Quite clearly, he is not John Carver, the um, Mayflower passenger. We've got real evidence to support that. And that's crucial in what we go about. So uh, um, drawing lessons from this, which apply to your own research, is don't just assume your first interpretation is right. Look at alternative interpretations. Be provisional, not certain. We, of course, frequently get people coming to us and say, we believe we're descended from this famous person, or we think we may be. Nothing wrong with that. Just don't be certain about it. You know, it may be. We can look at it and see, can we find supporting evidence? A lot of the time what you're looking for is a second piece of evidence that supports the first. And if you get stuck, get help. If you hit a brick wall, if you can't read the old writing, that's one of the things we're here for. And obviously with our experience and expertise, we can very often cut through a lot of things that couldn't have been done beforehand. You could have spent ages on this uh, John Carver example in Les Clues and other places, just totally wasted time. And make sure when you draw a conclusion that it's justified by the evidence or the lack of it. Now back to Marie de Lanois, is she related or was she related to Philippe de Lanois? Quite simply, there is no evidence. It does not mean that they were not related, although it looks unlikely, but we cannot make assumptions that are not supported by evidence. So I hope that's useful to you. Uh, as I say, this will apply in virtually all of your research, in virtually all of the areas where we may be able to help you. And please feel to get in touch. There on the screen are our contact details, the um, uh, email address and phone number. Um, we've made a lot of videos now on YouTube, so you may find a topic that you can, uh, is of interest, like this for instance, which will give you more information. A free consultation, we don't just say pay us money, get in touch, because actually what we need to do is look at 
what we may do for you and come back to you with the alternatives and the costs so you can make an informed decision about whether you'd like to help us. And as always, I mean, there's such pleasure in doing this and such information, surprises and so forth. So we'd be delighted if we could help you in that way. Thanks very much. We look forward to hearing from you.